Hello. I'd like to tell you a story. I'd like to tell you the story of him. And in order for me to tell you this story, I'm going to have to tell you some of my story. Because otherwise I wouldn't be able to explain who he is, what he is, and how he works, how he moves. Because it's us. We're the containers of light that he uses. The light, the source, the divine principle. This light emits frequencies of creation all day, all night, never ending, never ceasing, creating miracles, creating love, creating frequencies that you can catch and ride on to create your own realities and your own miracles. This force, this light, is something I have spent my entire life getting to know. This frequency of love that flows through the thread of all living things, seen and unseen, permeates our world. Your world, my world, we are just reflections of one another. We are different versions of the light. So this is not my story. This is our story. How this light shines from within to blend and merge to a light that is also without. As above, so below. As within, so without. And not the without to have nothing, the outside of yourself. Everything on the outside of yourself is a reflection of what's inside of yourself. The universe that we look at is also within yourself. The light that we pray to and that we talk to and that we manifest from is within us and without us. I remember the day it all began. It was a tragic day, genuinely tragic. On this day, I saw my own very father taken away by the police. And as I saw him being taken away, I ceased the will for joy and pleasure and hope. Having already come from quite a hopeless situation at the young age of eight, after witnessing this event and how it moved through me and how I could feel the feelings of all the characters involved, how I had an inner perception and a premonition of what was coming and what was happening. Moments before it did, the light was showing me and guiding me way before I had ever even known the light was there. And on this day, when I saw him run, and he was being chased, and he fell to his knees, placed his hands behind his head and surrendered. And as he was being taken away, I thought to myself, what is the point of going on? What is the point of this life? There is no good here. There is only pain and sorrow. What is to become of me? If this is my path, if this is my destiny. Biba, this is not your destiny. This is not your path. This is not your life. This is your father's life. These are the consequences of the choices that he made. You will not make those choices. Your life is not his life. You are separate from him. You have your own life to live. And I am here. And I am with you. And I'm always going to love you.
that was the first time I'd heard a voice. And this was not a voice inside of my mind. This voice was in the room. It was in the road. It was in the sky. It was reaching far back. And yet it was right in front of me. This voice was talking to me and it knew me. And the strangest thing was, I knew this voice. Even though I don't ever recall hearing it before, I knew it. This was the voice of my own soul calling me home. This was the voice of God talking through me and to me and showing me another way of being. And after I heard this voice, I realized I am not alone. There's nothing in this world truer than the truth that just came from that voice. When the truth spoke to me, it healed all the broken parts right then and there. It healed all the loss and all the sadness and all the secrets that this eight-year-old was carrying. It healed them in that very moment. The frequency and tone of that voice transformed this being called Biba into something quite different than she was moments before. It's like she was lit up from the inside out. And from that moment forward, she went on a quest to discover this life and this voice. Where did it come from? Who is it? How do I get to know it? How do I fall in love with that? And because she heard the original truth and the real truth, she no longer believed the lies she was being told. The lies from society, the lies from the programs and the systems that we all encounter, the illusions of separation, that God is in a building, where is a dress, and he'd like to punish you if you've been bad. For one, she knew that God was not in the church. She knew she was never going to find him there. She knew that that book that was being read was not the same vibration and healing frequency that spoke to her earlier in her life. But yet she played along. She went along and played the game, seeking quietly seeking in all these different places that they called worship. And he was never there. That voice was never there. That voice was deep within the reservoir of our own heart. Deep calls out to deep. And over time, Things got harder, much harder. Life did not get easier, it got harder. And her granny had taught her how to pray. And she taught her how to love and how to have a relationship with this so-called God. How to tell him everything and how to know that he was gonna be the one to help and bring the help that you need. He was the one that was never going to lie and he was the one that was never going to let you down. And so the eight-year-old turned 22 and when she was 22, she went into rehab and she got sober and she went into the worst depression she'd ever known for five long years. She went to these meetings daily, sometimes twice a day, sometimes three times a day to find peace, but there was none. But she knew on the inside of her, there was another way. She just had to find the right door to pass through. Eventually, years later, she met a man and she fell in love. And this man played music on the street and she knew him from a time before. He 
because when she heard the sound of the music on the street, she recognized that call. It was a calling, something calling her soul. And when she followed the music, she found the man. And as she watched him playing the music, she could see inside of his soul, somehow the music dissolved. Time and space as we know it, it dissolved the veil. And there he was, this being that she deeply loved from a long time ago, playing this sound. And they got married, and they had a child. And then that didn't work out. That was very short-lived. And through the grief and the loss of that marriage, and the nights that turned into weeks and months and years went by, she began to see a pattern in her life, the pattern of, I am always on my own. Ever since I was a child, I've never had a secure, safe home, nor have I had any security from a person. And the more she realized this, the more she began to see the patterns that would come into her life, that she would lean on him, lean on the light, further leaning in, because she realized there was nothing in this place that was going to soothe her, that was going to really help her, and that was going to tell her the truth. So she leaned in closer, and she experienced a miracle, the miracle that took all the sadness away, and in that place, that opened a door, the door she had been waiting for. This key of a miracle she received opened the door to the world of healing. Real healing. Where miracles happen. Where the unexplained things happen. And all her empathic abilities and her psychic abilities began to expand and become known and hidden things became revealed. And she began to see God and she began to sense these beings and she began to see healings and feel the energy flow through her and from her. And she began to understand how things work just a little bit. So she stayed on this healing place for a time, learning everything she could. Until she no longer could find him in that place because she'd walked into structures and patterns and paradigms that began to once again box in this light. And she realized she had to step away and go back in. And she discovered meditation. And she would sit for hours and months and years and there'd be nothing. And after waiting in the stillness and in the darkness, she began to see other worlds, other realities, other beings. She began to form relationships with the light and talk to the light. And he would show her around different places, incredible places that people who experience near-death experiences talk about. She accessed those realms through these meditations that she was doing. And the further she would go out, the further she would be met. And the more she would expand her mind, the more would be revealed to her. And she began to attract people into her light and into her life that resonated the same frequency as her, that knew her from a time before and recognized it. And they began to work together discovering this light and how it moves and how it works and how it flows through all things. And she realized there is no separation, that there is nothing on the outside, that the healing that we need and the other person needs is on the inside. That 
the love that we seek is on the inside. The security that we seek is on the inside. The forgiveness that we seek is on the inside. And so she stayed looking in and she discovered herself, her true self. And she realized that she was never born and she will never die. It's eternal. It's like the drop of a war, fractal, fractal, fractal. Everything is in cycles, everything is repetitive. Everything is in this moment. Your past, your present, your future. It's right here in this moment. Parallel reality is right here where you are in this moment. We have access to these realities when we learn to quieten the mind. Quieten the mind. Quieten the mind and allow the soul to rise within us and allow the soul and the light of our soul to continuously call us home. So no matter what's going on in our environments and in our worlds, because we do live in different worlds and we do have different realities and sometimes we get to share a similarity of our realities and we get excited. But when you go in, everything is revealed. There is nothing on the outside of you that's going to give you what you need. Everything is within. So cease seeking the distractions of the external world for a moment and sit within your own soul and begin to feel with your heart Begin to feel what that's like. Feel the fear, feel the unknown, feel the impatience, feel the forgiveness, feel the love, feel the joy and the bliss. Begin to feel it because it's in the feeling of it is your way back home. You're never gonna figure this out in your mind. This is never going to be something you can think about. You can only feel your way back home. And the mind will become used to this. And the mind will realize that it's not going to be out of order forever. That it has its place and it has its purpose. But we are more than a body. We are more than bones. And we are more than a mind. We are the eternal light beings. We are the original light. There was no beginning and there is no end. There is all possibilities and there is all potentialities. And my advice is this, seek your own reality, create your own reality. Don't live in somebody else's. Know yourself, not somebody else's version of you. Know yourself. Investigate who you are and the light will guide you home. As it does to me every day. Every day he speaks to me. Every time a tragedy happens, every time I'm worried, every time I feel something, he speaks and he always says the same thing. Everything is going to be okay. Viva, everything is okay, trust me. And then sometimes he says, what would you like? What would you really like? And in that moment of divine love, the only answer I have is to say more of you.